So you want to know what it feels like to be a teen? A lot of it is like a roller coaster. Everything is just more extreme. School, friends, drama. It's just a lot. So what is going on in the teen brain? And we do know that the teen years are some of the most important years in human development. And people across cultures have known this, marking the teen years with rites of passage and celebration. But now we have more science than ever before to understand the teen brain and why it's such an amazing time. There's so much that I want to know about my brain. I mean, I wish I knew more about what was going on in my brain when I was a teen. So we asked the top scientists and researchers, what are the most important things to know about the teen brain? Adolescents are emotionally brilliant. Adolescents are super learners who are natural explorers. One of the great things about adolescents is that they're risk takers, they're sensation seekers, and that's not a bad thing. So it's like they're supposed to try new things and take risks, that's how they learn. But that's also where the stereotypes come from. Teenage gang debs, kick happy, thrill hungry, always reckless. Teenagers look like adults, but we're measuring them as deficient adults. We don't go to toddlers and say, you're a deficient preschooler. When you promote adolescence as a time of brokenness, adolescents will think they're broken. We can't tell them that they belong if there actually isn't cues in place to make them feel like they belong. It's a precarious time because kids still have one foot in childhood and they're stepping into the earliest stages of adulthood. Being a teen means being in an awkward stage of, with you guys, I feel a lot like a kid because you guys are my parents, but when I'm with my friends, I feel like an adult. During adolescence, roughly age 10 to 19, you go through a process of separating, individuating from the adults in your life to set you up to eventually be more independent. There are even biological things that happen. I mean, you might feel like, I don't even want my parents to breathe around me. That's totally normal. When I asked the teens in my study what adults should know about people their age, one of the things that they said was understand us, understand our development. We're often saying little things to them, like stop being such a teen. Honestly, I just wish adults would remember that they went through this too they could really learn from who they used to be. It is an age when you have the courage to try new things. This drive to really explore novelty is a wonderful feature of how the brain is remodeling in various fascinating ways. The amygdala, which is this loud emotional space, part of the limbic system, becomes much more sensitive during this period. It actually grows in size from being flooded with hormones. No wonder you feel like you're on a roller coaster ride of emotions every day. I've been just get, having a bunch of emotions that I don't understand. Emotions feel so strong and it's all like, I, you know, I'm upset in this moment and it's hard to sort of see the bigger picture. And the prefrontal cortex, which is about judgment and decision-making, is just a little bit quieter during this period, growing at a different rate. You just like, your mind, like, it's like almost like your mind plays tricks on you. Like, I felt like I couldn't get out of this mental space. The brain is changing the fundamental aspect of its structural connections, what's called more integrated. That is, the linkages will become more robust. An adolescent, even at 15, is able to do so much more than a child at 10. This is my first time doing this. I don't know what I'm doing. If you tell me the oven is hot, I'm gonna have to touch it. Every few months, we'll have a moment where we feel like we level up in consciousness. They are just in progress. And the worst part for kids about having brains under construction is the disappointment they feel when they make a bad decision. Being mentally healthy is not about feeling good or calm or relaxed or happy. It's two things, having feelings that fit the situation and then managing those feelings well. So if you're upset because an upsetting thing has occurred, you might want to talk to people who love you. You might want to go for a run. You might want to listen to your sad playlist. You might want to have a good cry. Your job is finding ways to feel better that bring relief and do no harm. And sometimes the things that make you feel better might also open up new passions. The teen brain is wired to try lots of new things to see what lights you up, what are you passionate about? People who are doing things they're passionate about and put in energy and effort and love it and are clearly loving it. That's what like 
forever will be the coolest thing. Where I focus my attention is going to strengthen my brain even as it's beginning to prune itself down. Which is basically saying, pay attention to what you're paying attention to. During adolescence, your brain is incredibly malleable and it's also incredibly susceptible. Teens are subjected to more input than probably ever before in human history. So much of what is occurring in their brain is not what they signed up for. And you have to have the neurological filter of like, this isn't all real, this isn't all true, I'm being manipulated. Now kids get sucked down rabbit holes by algorithms. Things that should be horrifying start to just become kind of standard. And companies are taking advantage of that to influence what you do and think. And they don't always have your best interests in mind. Too much processed information is like too much processed food. It's satisfying in the moment, but leaves you feeling empty. I was actually um, really depressed and it was because of social media. I felt like it was very controlling and trapping. And so that's why I deleted it. It's endless. Go, 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 scroll, scroll, scroll. It's so easy when you're like, oh, I'm stressed. I'm gonna look at my phone or, you know, be on Instagram or, or watch TikToks. I think it's so dangerous because that doesn't make you feel better. With so many stressors coming into your brain all the time, school, friends, news, social media, it's completely normal to feel stressed and overwhelmed. It's your amygdala lighting up and telling your nervous system, I'm in danger, fight or flight. But it's how you choose to respond to those big feelings that really matters. You wanna build your own unique toolbox of things you can do in the moment to de-stress, regulate, and get grounded. I love to go run. I really like to draw. When I volunteered at an animal shelter, that was kind of like my calming time. Close my eyes, then breathe in and out, slowly, deeply. Breathing deeply and through your nose and not your mouth can help you regulate. By taking deep, slow breaths, you're actually triggering your body that I'm not about to run. You fill out your belly, you activate the parasympathetic system, and the parasympathetic is calm, relaxing. And as your nervous system calms, you're able to access your prefrontal cortex again, which helps you think more clearly and problem solve. And you can take a brain break anytime, in the morning, before a big test, before a game, and there's one other thing that can really set you up well, getting a good night's sleep. We have data showing that you do not actually get as good a sleep if there is a nearby phone. We are all so attached to our phones that we have to resist the impulse to engage with it even while sleeping. A good night's sleep helps you think better, get better grades, and be in a better mood. When you integrate your brain, you as an adolescent are actually taking charge of the wheel Yes, this is a time when the highs are really high, but the lows are really low. But this is a time when you are just experiencing everything in a way that people go to movies to feel. You get to feel it, and you get to feel it now. And you get to shape yourself into whom you want to be and whom you want to become. People who I know are, are gen genuinely happy with themselves are people who just said, you know what? It. These are my people in high school. These are my friends. I don't care what other people think of them. And I love them because I can tell them anything and trust them. It's not that we don't care what like people who are older than us have to say to us and the advice. It's just like, okay, I'll take what you said into mind, but I also need to figure out how to do things in my own way. 14,000 students were surveyed and they asked these students, why is it important for you to have a healthy brain? And 90% of these students said it's because they want to be known for something that they contributed something. There are so many teens that have said the things that no one will say and do the things that no one has done. A great trick of power is making you feel powerless. And I think that teenagers are often tricked into thinking we don't have power when we very much do. We as adults need to realize the future of the world is dependent on the essence of adolescence. And an integrated brain is the basis for well-being, for resilience, for insight, for empathy. And knowing your brain puts you in the driver's seat. So where do you want to go? Whenever I feel stressed out, I try and go on a walk with my mom. Just, you know, reading a book or spending a little free time with other family or friends. Moving 
I think helps me a lot. Let's eat some food and then you might feel better. And I'd be like, I'm not hangry. And then you eat food and you're like, okay, I was. Perhaps like right before I go to sleep, instead of like looking at my phone, I kind of just like take a moment.